En riktig god tirsdag og velkommen til Økonomienhetene her hos oss i Finansavisen. Mitt navn er Mari Stornsen på Spestadammen her i Oslo på denne 23. september. I morges kunne vi jo fortelle at Okea selger seg ut av Ymefeltet, og i denne sendingen er både konsernsjefen i Okea og i den thailandske store aksjonæren Bank Chuck Corporation på plass i studio. Og det skjer da på en dag der vi altså får vi si uken etter at det blir klart at Equinor og tyske RWE dropper planen om hydrogenrør til Norge. Og da holder seg til å sende naturgassen ned til Tyskland, så ble det kjent i dag at Shell legger sine planer om blått hydrogen på is. Kommunikasjonsdirektør i norske Shell, Jan Soppeland, sier til bransjebladet Energy Watch at, sitat, gassen fra Nyhamna er sterkt etterspurt som naturgass til Storbritannia og Europa, og vi ser ikke at dette bildet vil endre seg med det første. Han legger for øvrig til at Shell fortsetter å jobbe med planer om grønn hydrogenproduksjon, og vi vet jo også at de i hvert fall forløp vi også jobber videre med havvind i Nordsjøen, selv om Shell da har kuttet mye i den satsingen globalt. Gaming Innovation Group endrer navn til Gen 2 Media, og ellers så har DNO Equinor gjort et, får vi si, lite funn da, på mellom 2-3 millioner fat i Angel-prospektet nord i Nordsjøen, og det kommer frem i meldinger fra DNO og Sokkeldirektoratet. Det som kanskje er viktigst er at dette også er en avgrensning da på dette Heisenberg-funnet til DNO, som da bekrefter funnstørrelsen der på mellom 24 og 56 millioner fat. Ellers så melder det svenske eiendomskonsernet SBB, som jo har vært mye omtalt under renteøkningene, at de vil ta boligenheten Svea fastigheter på børs nå i fjerde kvartal i Sverige. Det nye noterte selskapet vil bli Sveriges største børsnoterte boligselskap, og noteringen kommer da, får vi si, etter at SBB noterte Public Property Invest her på Oslo Børs tidligere i år. Markedet i dag preges av den kraftige børsoppturen i Kina, som kommer etter at myndighetene der annonserte flere grep for å stimulere eiendomsmarkedet. Hang Seng i Hongkong endte opp 4 prosent i dag. Europeiske børser også solid i pluss. Hovendeksen opp 0,4 her hjemme. Wall Street hadde jo en ny all-time high i går etter en forsiktig oppgang der. Futuresene på både Nasdaq og S&P peker også svakt oppover i dag med Norsolje, som vi kan vel nesten si at den begynner å snuse på 76 dollar fatet. Godt over 75 ligger vi i hvert fall. Vi skal få med dagens to gjester. Vi er tilbake rett etter dette. Hva skal vi si? Velkommen og bytte til engelsk, får jeg si. CEO of Okea, Svein Liknes. Welcome back to the show, and welcome as well to the CEO of Bang Chak Corporation in Thailand, I should say. Yep. Thank you. Thank and welcome you back me. to Norway. Yes, yes. A few times now. Yeah. yeah, because you have been a shareholder and the largest shareholder for, for some time now. Six years now. Yeah. Six years now. I just want to start with, with Svein because the, the sure. company announced a deal today selling off uh, your ownership in uh, IME. I feel that uh, for the people who have been following the industry, <clears throat> first had a, a very troubling start, had to be demolished, and you came in later yep. with Repsol uh, to re revitalize it, and now you're uh, selling it. What made you take that decision? Well, uh, we have a continuous view on the uh, portfolio that we have. Uh, we entered the EMA license uh, back in 2016, I believe it was, and have been you know, quite uh, uh, supportive to, to the license, even when the going had been tough uh, sometimes. Uh, but, you know, as part of growing the company, because that is a question that I get sometimes, why are you selling uh, if you are growing? Uh, but, you know, having an optimized portfolio uh, within your core areas and where you also see future value creation, that is basically the basis for for this. And uh, Lime uh, wanted to expand or wanted to increase the NEMA, and also we felt there was a good transaction uh, commercially for us, so therefore we decided to kind of exit the, the license now. Uh, you're accounting now again, you're reporting today of between 150 and 250 million, but you impaired the asset as, as late as Q2 of about 144 million. Mm. Do you know now where, where sort of uh, the story ends for you financially with this investment? Uh, well, we think it's going to be, well, we've been in there now for quite some time, uh, you know, and I think also it was the right decision to make back in 2016. The company was established the year before and needed some production and uh, and EMA was uh, an area that actually fitted, you know, the strategy of Okea back then. Uh, so uh, financially, I have to go back and, and look at all the numbers, but, you know, the transaction when we are doing it today, I 
as you said, it will have a positive uh, impact on our balance. And uh, so we think, you know, it's a, it's a good and it's also the commercially right thing to do for us at this point. So, so there hasn't been a loss making venture for you when you sum it all up? Well, when we sum, it's been a very challenging asset. That, that is something we have said several times. Yeah. So, uh, so I would say uh, the EMA, uh, although it has given cash flow, uh, it has been a very challenging asset. So, so obviously it has not been, you know, a very uh, commercially good investment from day one. But, uh, you know, going out now is the right thing to do, I believe. Uh, Chaiwat Kova, do I pronounce it right? Kova Visarak? Chaiwat is good, yeah. Yeah, Chaiwat? Yeah, Kova yeah, is, is exactly right. I have to ask you, you've been CEO now for uh, ten years, nine years, ten years, ten years in now. this corporation, and you've yeah. been along with the OKR investment the whole the whole time. What, what made you initially go for this investment and come come into the Norwegian oil sector? Well, a bit of background about Bang Cha. As a company, we are second largest uh, energy companies in Thailand, just after PTT, which is National Oil Companies. Um, basically, we start off as a refinery and marketing, and then we, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, venture into renewables and, and biofuels. And the last pillar, a very important pillar for us, is upstream ENP. Uh, OK, it's the, our second investments. Uh, we learned a lot from the first investment, and then we decided to invest in OGS, help OGS fund the acquisitions of Dragon from Shells back in 2018-19, and, and it proved a very, very right decision we have made. Right now, I can say Okia is one of the very important pillars in Bangcha as a group. So um, it has been a very, very good investments, and I believe that that still be you know our core strategy is going forward. So is it because you want to be in Norway, or because you want to be in the upstream ENP business that you found this investment attractive? I guess um, yeah. The first is probably we wanted to be in the ENP business. We look around the world, and we, we believe that Norway is probably the best to, to get in. It's actually quite a high barrier to entry, but once you are in here. You are in a very stable, you know, climate, very stable regulations, very stable, you know, the, um, um, uh, law, and also you have a, a a group of very competent people out there to do the business. So that, to me, is it, actually a very good decision, and that's why we believe that call, um, OK will continue to be our core, you know, as a asset. And you own almost 50% of the company. I'm sure you've been following the debate in Norway we've had over um, some tax changes that we've had yep. in, in several sectors, but also in the oil sector. Has that caused you any concern, give being a foreign investor going into Norway? We know that the outset that the tax structure here is the tax really high, but also that incentivize people to re reinvest. You can claim all the drilling, right? And then actually during the pandemic, you even have this negative tax scheme, which I actually introduced back to my countries. And my chairman now become Ministry of Finance, and he probably want to adopt some of that as well. So yeah, you have a very transparent tax system, and I, I think we like that. Svein, so, I have to ask you, you know, they're in all kinds of businesses and refining and uh, like trading and biofuels. And uh, will we see OKI expand into um, refinery in, in Europe, maybe? No, I think that OKI should do what we do best, uh, and that is to continue on the strategy that we have already established to be the leading mid to late life operator on the Norwegian continental shelf. I think we have demonstrated both on the performance on Drögen, but also what we have done on Brage and the uh, uh, Bessler sanctioning. That's the only PDO for field development which has been sanctioned this year. So. I think we should uh, continue to do to the, do that part, uh, and uh, but it's interesting to be part of the uh, overall Bangkok group as well, traveling and sitting in strategy sessions in Bangkok and listen to what the other businesses are doing. Uh, but I believe the diversification in Bangkok as well, and and then Nokia being kind of a pure EMP upstream uh, company. I think that is uh, is the best setup both for Nokia but also in the in the conglomerate that BCP is. Because in Norway, there's a big discussion going on. Should we continue with oil and gas, and for how long, or should we not? When you sit in Bangkok, what, what's, what's, uh, what view do you have on this whole debate that we have in, in Norway? Is it sort of familiar to you? Does it seem strange? Or Let, let, let me share you my experience. Over my 10 years as a CEO of Bangkok Group, uh, as a group, we invest almost 60 billion baht in renewables. That's equivalent to about 20 billion NOC in renewables. We build a big, big, you know, renewable companies. It makes sense when the cost of borrowing was zero percent. Now the cost of borrowing is the in US dollar is like five point five. Okay, then reduce it to what, five and a quarter, whatever. Thank you, is. Federal Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> but still, yeah. most of those renewable projects, the II is about five to six percent. It's very difficult to justify at the moment with, with if there's no 
government subsidies. We have seen a big package in the US, right? IRA and all that. But without that kind of subsidies, it's really difficult. And we, as a CEO, need to meet our shareholders and explain to our shareholders, you know, um, um, where their money go, right? And where are the returns? So those are quite important. And also we have, as uh, uh, he's just said that, Swen just said that we have a sessions on the strategy in Bangkok. And we, we see a lot of super majors they actually more or less retreat from renewables, right? And I, I mean, it's all about reliabilities, securities, affordabilities, right? This and sustainability, of course, to that too. So, I mean, we need to balance that a little bit. But where do you ask largest shareholder, where do you want to see OK uh, go in terms of that? Because we see companies taking some different paths. We have Ocker BP and OK, uh, at least so far, being a sort of pure play EMP operator. We have yeah. Equinor who do like Shell, who sort of try and, and do a mix. Sure. And we like I mentioned, Shell is pulling back from blue hydrogen in Norway, at least. Yeah. Where, where do you want to see OK uh, go? OK, um, probably what happened to Bang Jack uh, can show you that, that why, what we want to do with OK is right up from pandemic 2020 until now, five years on, I grow my company by fourfold. We last year acquired the whole entire Exxon Mobil business in Thailand. As for, was, yeah. yeah, yeah, for almost two billion US dollars, and, and based from that we, we more than doubles our our revenues. The same goes for Ogiers. I think I have very good people. I have very good managements and very good team. I think they also have very good reputations in this country as well, and and want to build from there. And, and we want to see, we actually just, you know, sneak out from our strategy meetings with Ogier. We have it there, up there at, at SBU, but uh, come here for this program. And, and we were talking about, we need to grow at least double, if not triples or quadruples. So, and they do, what they do best is ENP. And I will be with us for as long as we live. Sounds like we can expect some growth going forward. But speaking, just before we move on, I want to talk about your ownership because obviously you've been a shareholder for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, yet back in the fall of 2022, a lot of people sort of raised their eyebrows in Norway when they saw a release from you in early September announcing you wanted to sell some of your shares in Okia that came from the equator race. I guess it was back in 2019 with the listing. Yep. Um, and then about a month later, you sort of pulled back and the share price uh, had a little swing in, in between there. Right. Um, are you staying on with your current ownership stake for, for the foreseeable future? Or? Definitely, we are staying here. As I said, this is a core pillar to our business going forward. And Ogier will always be there. So our holding is there. 2022 is something to do with the pandemics. You know, out of the pandemics, if you recall 2021, oil price was minus $20. Okay, so as a CEO, you need to conserve the liquidity. Take system. measures, yeah. Yeah. And then um, from the IPOs, we have a bit of excess shares. We thought that, you know, and, and then we have something to, to do with, with, with the work here. So we thought that that as a share should be sold to, to get the liquidity for the companies. I did with my lithium mining <coughs> investments. We also invested in lithium mining in Argentina. Um, I could have kept that and I make 10 times profit, but I saw during the pandemic, they make five times profit. That's good enough. I hold cash better than hold, hold share. So, so it's a bit of liquidity management during the pandemic. But the long-term intention is always there. All gear is key to Bang Jack Group growth. Uh, we have to talk about this future of OKEA. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there you have some electrification, electrification projects going on at Dragon and maybe a, a windmill off uh, Brage. Mm -hmm. We'll see. But your core business is ENP. Uh, obviously, the acquisition of Brage seems to be working quite well. Not so much for Stotfjord, where you had some big impairments uh, because the reserves turned out not to be as high and the costs a little higher mm -hmm. than expected. Yeah. Um, where is the company now? Have you sort of reset after the Stotfjord deal and, and uh, are trying to find a path forward? Or? Yeah, well, well, for us, the Stotfjord deal, it was a big and important uh, transaction to do, uh, but it was also a transaction, you know, that we decided to be part of the solution. So we are now working very closely with uh, Equinor and also the other partners in, in uh, Stotfjord to actually drive the performance up. Because you didn't choose to pull out? No, no. We, we, uh, we decided, you know, if you're going to grow and if you want to stay, you have to kind of honor, uh, you know, the, the transaction should do. And, and uh, we still believe there's a lot of value in Stato. Uh, One percent increase in recovery rate is close to 60 million BOE. So the, the volume is still there, but you have to do it in a very effective way. So now, uh, together with the operator, we have uh, launched a new strategy for Stato, which is uh, FLX20, uh, we call it. And there is a new drilling plan. There is a new reservoir draining strategy. So 
you know, this is what will bring results up from Startfield. And I think we entered this year around 10,000, 11,000 from that asset, and we are now seeing around 14,000. So we do see gradual improvements in the asset. Uh, so, and we still want to grow. Uh, we still want to grow in Norway, as has just been mentioned by the chairman here as well. And, but for us, it's also very important to have a diversified portfolio. Uh, we say that we are good in operating mid to late life assets, which obviously I think we have demonstrated as well, but also a healthy partner-operated portfolio is also important for us uh, because that is also a very significant contributor to, to our overall portfolio. So, so we will continue to grow uh, both when it comes to operator ships uh, but also when it comes to partner-operated as long as we see that it fits our strategy. But when you look at the sort of overall framework of the deal, you impaired almost immediately or after a few months uh, almost a, a billion and a half Norwegian kroners mm -hmm. in this whole investment. Um, how does uh, has it changed your approach to these deals? Was it a sort of one-off in the ge geology of Statue that caused this, or is it a sign that these deals are more difficult than they might seem uh, when you look at them the first time? Well, uh, you know, uh, growing within you know brownfield and, and doing M and A and inorganic growth obviously sits with you know one risk picture. If you are building. Uh, big infrastructures in in Asia or, or elsewhere, then you have the risk of overruns, etc. But so this is, you know, within the geology of the uh, of the asset. But also the uh, 2023 was a bit of a special year. Uh, it was a challenging year and difficult year, uh, also for Efinor to actually deliver on the on the value on Startfuel. So, but we believe, you know, the uh, Startfuel Alpha will produce until 27, uh, and the remaining Bravo and, and Charlie, and also the satellites that you don't see around the Startfuel area will continue to produce until you know 2040s so this is kind of a long-term game for us and and we really believe there is value to be unlocked uh, even though the impairment last year at closing because of the updated uh, RNB reserves numbers was lower at that point but those are also numbers that fluctuates so so now again we there will be new numbers uh, coming this fall uh, both on Startfield but also on the remaining assets and uh, you know you have to kind of have the long glasses on uh, lenses on when, when you are into into this Sitting in the boardroom and being obviously the biggest shareholder, do you feel like when we're treated the OKR fairly or? I guess um, it's, it's always, you know, we do M&As all the other times and, 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 each, and each deal different from the other deals, okay? Um, uh, there are good deals, there are deals that something may be, may be wrong in the process. We will learn from that and we make sure that we will not repeat that kind of mistake. So thing happens, I guess, part of the learning process. They have done so many good deals. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, probably I think I need to compliment the management team that they've been delivering, okay, over the past three years, he joined us on the production doubles and we have much more diversified portfolio than we, you know, have it three years ago. So um, yeah, you, you, you can't have all the blossom things, right? You probably you need to prepare for something that are totally unexpected. Because being a CEO, you've been through that. <laughs> I, we have to also ask sort of, uh, I guess you don't want to pre-announce any deals, but there are a lot of things going on on the NCS. We know Sval Energy is for sale. We've seen the Neptune being bought up by a combination of Void and Nagy and, and the a and &E mm. In uh, Italy, Harbour just bought Vintishal. Uh, they are making a big move into uh, NCS from, from the UK. Are there a lot of assets for sale now and companies for sale? Uh, there will in all, reality, or in, yeah, well, <laughs> I, I can't be specific, obviously, on uh, on those processes. But there will always, I believe, and there should also be a very healthy transaction market on the NCS, uh, like when we did the Wintersal deal and took over Brage, but also took them out of Eva Rosen and six percent in Nova, which is a greenfield development or was a greenfield development. Uh, you know, that was uh, kind of a strategy that you know m was good for us. So there was a bilateral kind of discussion with uh, with Wintersal. So, so what we are looking for. Well, we are trying to find, you know, win-win solutions uh, uh, to, to, to kind of suggest maybe transactions to, to somebody who maybe should consider if somebody else should operate their assets, for example. Uh, so I still think there will be, be transactions. What's important for us, though, is that when we enter into uh, transactions to grow, uh, we need to ensure that, you know, we, uh, we get assets which actually fits our strategy and our portfolio. So, uh, so 
but you know we have demonstrated what we can do we have a size and we have the capacity and we are a fully fledged operator we have greenfield developments now demonstrated by the hustle mus to drugen but also bestla now which i just mentioned to to brage uh, so i think that we are well positioned both because of we have a good track history of doing transactions we are a fully fledged operator and we have a very good you know uh, reputation i would uh, like to say both with the authorities and unions and, and employees so i think we are ready to do both asset transactions but also corporate transactions are you willing to contribute fresh capital if you see a large deal um, that could be made with okr everything's on the card yeah we're open to all the ideas uh, we are, as i said just have the sessions talking about how we're going to grow our gears you know in the next couple of years or, or even a longer time and we open to all the options uh, we want to grow the companies uh, we want it to be a visible one okay uh, we have doubles um, but we, we still want to see double from at least double from here so, or even quadruple from here yeah yeah are and you more production volume yeah is it a, an option for bank Chok to expand into emp into other markets yes we are, we are working beyond on that. where you are now yeah we are working on that one uh, we learned a lot from our investment in ogears and um, we have a good team here and we will probably from time to time tap their expertise in any other other market as well so i guess that's the synergy we have that's how we look as a group that this is you know a jewel you know in the group is a do you see a, the ncs moving forward with fewer players now even though we have harbor as a as a newcomer we i mean we have all the big three void and occupant and like we were all announcing big exploration plans up in the barrens to try mm -hmm. and find more natural gas we'll see if they succeed or not um but then we also have obviously now harbor being a, a big player beneath them uh, alongside you um, yeah, I, th I think, think we'll see more exits. Yeah, well, it fluctuates. You know, we have gone through these cycles with many companies, fewer companies, uh, you know, big companies pulling out of oil and gas. Uh, we did have the uh, a lot of the companies moving into renewables and, and kind of announcing they were stepping down on ENP. That uh, sentiment seems to change again. Uh, so, so I still believe, you know, they will be here. Uh, but I. I think the NCS is a very attractive place to be if you're into EMP. Uh, as was just mentioned here as well, it's a very stable, although high fiscal regime and high taxes, but it's a very stable, especially if you compare to our neighbors uh, in the West, uh, the UK. Uh, so, so I guess the interesting part to, to kind of observe is also Will we see more influx of uh, of uh, companies from the UK coming to Norway, for example? I guess that is something we, we uh, could see over the next uh, couple of months or years. And last question, since we have someone who's actually sort of uh, with both feet planted in Asia, observing what happens there. Mm -hmm. um, given the, the continuous economic growth and obviously appetite for energy growing in Asia, in big markets like Indonesia, Thailand, India, we see obviously India trying to find more oil and gas. And in Malaysia, we see similar uh, initiatives to try and discover more. Um, do you see a lot of growth there in the actual production in the years ahead? or Because you, I guess, I guess uh, could invest in some of those projects as well, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, take Thailand alone, okay? Um, we import almost 1 million barrels a day of, you know, oils into Thailand. We are the importers. Uh, gas, we, we used to have a lot of gas from Gulf of Thailand is depleting the reserve, and we need to probably import through LNG as well. So that's why I think ENP is still be a very, very sensible direction for any oil and gas company to, to pursue. And um, yeah, Thailand itself is already a big, quite premium market for us to serve. But uh, we look at the region as well, you know, um, Southeast Asia as, as a region. And we probably we want to do more there uh, by, you know, learning from what OKS has done, especially for those mid to late life assets, because we have seen a lot of super major are now pulling back the investment then they want to expand whether in Guyana or or the US Brazil right? yeah, exactly. yeah the Permian yeah yeah so um that's a very good model that, that we're probably gonna adopt in our regions we'll see uh, how things develop over time so and uh, Liknes head of OKA and Chaiwat head of Bank Track thank you so much for joining us på tampen av sändningen tänkte jag bara och nämna att huvudindexen på Sjöbörs ligger uppe 0,4 med nollpris då stabilt över 75 dollar fat i dag fortsatt grönt nedover i Europa och svagt upp på futuresna på Wall Street då 36 ja, minuter före Wall Street handeln är er igång 15:30 norsk tid i finansavisen i morgon så kan du läsa Trygve Egnars ledare om att han nå gravlägger 
drömmen om Hegnars batterifabrik grundet krisen i svenske Northvolt. Elmera ledelsen slår tillbaka mot Emmer Markets som vi jo forventer et milliardkrav mot selskapet. Du kan läsa hvorfor Kepler halssuger kursmålet på TGS efter fusjonen med da PGS. Og så kan du läsa hvorfor Jardini Research er svært kritisk til at Fed tog et dobbeltkutt på rentemøte forrige uke. Men det er i morgen altså, og det var sendingen vår for denne tirsdagen. Tack for at du så eller hørte på. Vi er tilbake med børsmålen 0855 i morgen. Da kommer den nye toppsjefen i Sparbanken SR Bank. Og så blir det kommunigheten 14.30. Da skal vi snakke eiendom med Bård Bjølgru i Kolliers. I mellomtiden så får du som alltid siste nytt på FA.no. Ha en strålende tirsdag alle sammen. Vi ses.